Marketing Manager within the GAN Business Unit here at TI. Alongside me today is John Gomez, one of our apps engineers. As we go through today's session, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat as mentioned, and John will be helping uh, ask those questions at the end of the session. So today we're gonna be going through TI GAN's first half bridge device that we're releasing, the LMG2610. It is a 650 volt rated device with 170 milliohm and 250 milliohms with integrated gate drivers and integrated current sense. We're gonna do one or two slides quickly on GAN basics, why GAN, what is its benefits over silicon. Then we're gonna dive into the key features of the LMG 2610 and look at EVMs and reference designs that are already available on TR.com using it. So looking at GAN FET basics. GAN is fundamentally a better power FET, especially a high voltage power FET than a silicon solution. First and foremost, GAN has about 25% of the gate capacitance as a standard silicon solution. That means faster turn on and turn off, higher switching speeds, and a reduced amount of gate loss per switching cycle. GAN, again, compared to a, sil a standard silicon device, has about 20% of the output capacitance. This is, again, gonna directly impact your ability to switch quickly, but really impact the amount of switching losses you're seeing in your final application. A lot of these benefits are coming from the fact that GAN has a much lower RDS on for a comparable silicon die. So besides having better properties as a power FET, we're also able to achieve the same RDS on for a smaller size device, which is where we're reducing these parasitic components. And then lastly, due to GAN's unique device structure, there's no inherent body diode. No body diode means no reverse recovery losses when switching, and it reduces the amount of ringing on your switch node and can help with a number of EMI challenges. A lot of these benefits for GAN directly translate into ACD, ACDC adapters and power adapters that you're seeing in the market today. So we have the obvious thing of when you're thinking about a phone charger, you want it to be small, lightweight, and even if it's a high power one that maybe can charge your laptop, you don't want it to be physically large uh, as you carry it around in your bag. By improving the efficiency, we're also able to improve the thermal performance of the overall design, hopefully making that charger uh, physically cooler or by the fact that it's smaller, we're able to achieve the same thermal performance in a smaller package. We really from TI side look at integration as a key way to reduce the number of external components you need and make your overall system design easier. And lastly, the big reason why all of this is a topic is that as we look around the world at different regulation standards and different nations, efficiency, especially for anything that you're gonna leave in, plugged into the wall constantly, is becoming more and more challenging. And you'll see a lot of designs, go, designs going from 90% to 94, 95% power efficiencies as they also increase the power that's needed to charge your phone or your laptop. The LMG 2610 alongside the UCC 28782 ACF controller is meant to be a real simple two chip solution for your primary side regulation of an active clamp flyback converter. This is where we have two built in GAN dies inside the package with the level shifters and other features. One key thing to look at here, you can see in the bottom right next to a simplified block diagram where you can see the controller and the GAN device together is that we're using a unique QFN device that's seven by nine millimeters. And it has two different heatsink pads to help cool each die individually so you can have good thermal performance. Looking at key features within the LMG2610, you will see that there are two 650 volt dies. The high side is a 170 milliohm GAN die. The low side is a 250 milliohm GAN die, and you can see the switch node that's exposed at the middle of the device. With each of these GAN dies, we have a built-in in built gate driver within the package that's able, capable of switching each GAN die up to one megahertz. This means that any power loop challenges, any tuning that you would have to do between your gate driver to your GAN fit is eliminated. And this really makes it easier to design with as we work on these high frequency designs. 
Other key components already built in is an integrated level shifter and bootstrap diode. That bootstrap diode is designed to have no reverse recovery as the device is in operation. This means that you're able to control from your input and the device is able to communicate between the two gate drivers up to each other, even though they're not necessarily, um, we're not building in an isolated bias supply or anything else within the system. And that bootstrap diode really simplifies the amount of power management that you have to do within the system. Pretty standard for these low power converters, but by having it built in, it makes your system solution easier. One other key feature that we really think is unique to this market is current sense emulation. This is where built into the device is a current sense emulator, and that is able to report back the amount of current passing through the low side GANFET to the ground. And it'll put out about one milliamp for every amp of output. And we actually can see this current sense emulation directly impact the amount of losses in the system. And I'll share a specific example for how that current sense emulation impacts the system. Lastly, some other features here. We have fast high speed or high side power up during the system power on, that's less than eight microseconds. We have low quiescent standby mode. So that means 35 microamps is being consumed by the low side gate driver and GANFET when in standby mode and only 60 microamps by the high side. This is one of the leading industry leading features of this device, outperforming most of its contemporaries, either other integrated GAN devices or a discrete solution. And lastly, something you'll see almost standard across all of our TI GAN products is built in overcurrent protection and thermal protection. As I mentioned, we're gonna look at specifically an example of that current sense simulation. So this current sense simulation is basically a scaled down replica of the drain to source current that we're emulating. So that way we can eliminate that external shunt resistor that you would typically have within your system. That external shunt resistor is going to have a required loss because you're passing current through a resistor and it's not doing anything to help you switch in your system besides sensing. This current sense simulation is able to reduce all those power losses. And as you can see here in our example, the traditional solution for you know, a standard 65 watt converter might be 173, 173 milliwatts of power losses. Through this current sense simulation, we're able to significantly reduce it down to only 9.6 milliwatts of power loss. One other key benefit here that isn't necessarily, necessarily seen in the power loss performance is the fact that we have this built in. It means that the device's low side thermal pad is able to able to directly connect to the system ground because you don't have to have that shunt resistor on the bottom side of your converter. And this is going to help overall with the system thermal performance. And we actually have some uh, FLIR shots so that way you can see the thermal performance of our devices. Here we can see a side-by-side -side board design, one with a discrete solution, and then one with the LMG2610. So as we look at this side by side, you can see on the left side, the fact that you'd have to have two specifically discrete GAN devices. You'd have to have internal regulation, that bootstrap diode external, possibly an isolated driver or a digital isolator externally. The LMG2610 significantly simplifies your board design, both making that board design smaller and removing a ton of external components that you would typically require in your system. We already have an EVM available on TI.com that you can go order a sample today. It's the UCC28782 EVM. So this is the EVM for the controller that this LMG2610 is built on. So it's our, our EVM essentially for ACF solutions. And this is already available as mentioned. And then the bottom left, you can see that we've taken a number of different efficiency numbers across a universal AC input as low as a 90 volt AC to 265 volt AC input across several different output voltages that you would typically see in a uh, typical PD 3.0 uh, converter. And on the right side, you can see the load efficiency across the different AC inputs. 
Alongside this, we've done conducted EMI testing, which is available on TI.com. You can see it here. Uh, right now, we're showing the results for a 20 volt, 3.25 volt amp output for both 120 volt AC and 230 volt AC inputs. As I mentioned, we do want to look at some of kind of the thermal performance. Almost always one of the hotspots you'll see in the system is your transformer. And you can see us here designing an overall system that's able to have less than 100 C across all different applications. And when you look at the overall charger design, and this is obviously an open frame design right now that we're looking at doing this uh, thermal shot on, we are able to build a physically very cool charger. And lastly, we can look at LMG2610 and the larger portfolio of what GAN devices are available in the market. This is where the LMG2610 has a built-in gate driver with one of the best current sense emulation features in the market. We outperform all of their competitors in terms of the quiescent current consumption of our device, especially in low standby mode. We have that built-in voltage regulation and that built-in bootstrap diode. We're able to adjust our drive strength, thus allowing you to tune for your different EMI performance of your system. We have a fault signal output meant to be paired with our ACF controller, the UCC28782. And then we have that built-in overcurrent over temperature protection, and we're able to be robust against transient ring peak voltages. Besides the EVM that we already have available on TA.com, we've also released a 60 watt USB-C power delivery wall outlet ACF design. This is again using the LMG2610 and the high frequency ACF controller, the UCC28782. We've also used the high frequency SR controller, the UCC24612 on the secondary side for the synchronous rectification. This design is targeted at maybe a more uh, American standard AC input of only 120 volt AC input. But as you can see, it's able to achieve an extremely slim form factor targeted at a essentially a wall outlet that you can then add USB-C outlets to. Now, I've covered a lot in 15 minutes. Hopefully this gives you a strong idea of why ACF is a great option for you in your system and why you'd be wanting to use it in the charger and that TI is helping provide a streamlined two chip solution for your primary side regulation and 60, 60 to 65 watt adapters. As always, you can go to TI.com, GAN, learn a lot more. We have a huge set of training videos for everything from our low power to our high power solutions. We have a number of different app notes talking about different feature sets and thermal design. And we have a ton of different design tools, everything from multi kilowatt uh, reference designs, to these lower power reference designs available for you to leverage. With that, I saw one or two questions come in. Um, John, can you read out one or two of those questions? Sure. So yeah, a question uh, starting off with this one. Why do we have two different RDS ons for the high side and low side FETs? Yeah, that's a good point. So the high side device typically doesn't conduct, conduct as much current as the low side. That way we're able to use a slightly higher, higher RDS on and essentially create a better cost effective solution uh, in the ACF design. Uh, you could theoretically use a symmetrical half bridge, but it's not necessarily as efficient. Uh, from a cost perspective. Um, another one is, is the LMG2610 only targeted for AC to DC applications or can it be used in other applications as well? Yeah, so we are obviously with these reference designs and the EVM that we have available today, they are targeted at AC DC flybacks that are below 75 watts where you do not need a PFC stage. If you build in your own PFC stage, thus you have a DC bus, 
ACF is still be able to be used as a flyback solution, and it can support all the way up to, I think we've done testing up to 140 watts with an active PFC uh, with the LMG 2610. So it, it creates a more robust solution if you are willing to build in a active PFC into your charger. Great, thanks. And then will this work with any other controllers or only TI specific controllers? Good question. So the LMG 2610 is designed to work with the UCC 28782. Uh, the idea is that we're trying to make a streamlined two chip solution from a controller to a GAN half bridge. Now we have done initial testing inside of our own testing and qualification of our device that it does work with other ACF controllers in the market. Um, so if you look out in the market and you see another ACF controller, the LMG 2610 doesn't necessarily have anything restricting it from working with it there, but just when we look at the pinout, the layout and design and the overall performance, the LMG 2610 and the UCC 28782 are designed to be a perfect pairing from the two devices. But as always, if you have another controller that is your preference, you do have flexibility there. Awesome, thanks Alex. If anyone has any other additional questions, feel free to ask away or just drop them in the chat. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's NPU webinar. The recording and PDF versions of the slide will be available at ti.com slash NPU. We will see you next Thursday at 10 a.m. for the topic TI's LMK6, the industry's first solution. If you have any final questions, please feel free to ask them via chat. Otherwise, have a great day.